Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at NXP with Yifang Zhang, who's going to talk today about Bluetooth Low Energy and Mesh Networks. So Yifang, we've heard lots about Bluetooth, and Bluetooth Low, low Energy has been in phones for quite a while now, probably since, what, about 2010. Yes. But it's starting to come into the home market, which raises all sorts of new challenges. Why don't you tell us what the problem is there? Well, basically, it's a range. <clears throat> it's a communication range. And in the home, normally you have a very complicated uh, structure, and uh, the wall bounces the uh, waveform, and uh, so you don't have very good uh, signal reception. And then, you, uh, on the other hand, you want the device to talk to the smartphone. You could be anywhere inside the home, while the device could be somewhere else in the corner. So you don't have very good uh, reception at home. So therefore, you, uh, you need some kind of relay to get the signal to the phone and back to the device itself. But there's also more um, nodes than what we typically deal with in Bluetooth Low Energy, right? Yes, yes. So when we start to define the standards, the intention is not to build a network. Bluetooth inherently is a point-to-point -point, uh, communication system, start from day one. But nowadays, because of the application demand, so we start to think a networking for, for Bluetooth system. So what do you draw out what a designer would actually be looking at when they're developing a chip and developing a network here? So let's say this is a, this is a, at home, and where you have, uh, you have your, um, let's say you have your light bulb here that you want to control, this is your kitchen. And while you are probably already in your bedroom and about to sleep, and you want to uh, use your cell phone, uh, you want to check whether this light in the kitchen is still on or off and if it's on you want to turn it off because the uh, because the structure is so the, inside the home the structure is so complicated your waveform probably won't be able to get it directly but rather bouncing back and forth and until it goes there in that case you won't have very reliable radio communication over there so you probably don't you probably will not be able to reach the signal or uh, reach the light bulb here some, somewhere in the middle, you need a relay device. Let's say here, you have another relay device where you can communicate to this device, and this device can relay the signal here, and there is a back. So and typically, when we design Bluetooth low energy devices, a lot of these, this stuff is dark. The silicon is dark. The uh, stuff is off. How does that affect the receiving of that signal? Well, that actually uh, has been addressed by Bluetooth Energy already. Bluetooth energy uh, device wake up periodically, so once in a while it will wake up, uh, try to listen. So that's how we can uh, get the system uh, communicate constantly. And as you start getting more devices on this network, what happens? How does it start interacting with the devices that are out there, and how do you start controlling um, this one's on, this one's off, this one's registering here, this one's not? <clears throat> so you got, let's say you have a one uh, device here, and you got one device here, and you probably get another device here, you get another device here. Let's say this is a light bulb one, and this is a light bulb two. This is a, uh, let's say it's a door lock, uh, the lock. And this is a um, uh, uh, temperature sensor. Okay. So you have a couple of devices at home. And in a normal Bluetooth communication, and one device can talk to several, but all of this, if you want all of these devices talk to each other, all of these devices have to go through the phone and the back. Okay. So imagine you also have a light switch here. And uh, this light switch is also Bluetooth or low energy enabled. You can use this light switch instead of your smartphone to control. Then in that case, you can leave your phone off. And one of that will act as a master. But if they're out of range, then they cannot communicate to each other effectively. If they are out of range, does it tend to deplete a battery or draw more power than if they are not? Uh, yes, so if they are out of range, they will try a couple of times to get back, uh, to try a couple of times to connect with a master device. If, if the timeout, then they will start, uh, they will start to uh, advertisement again, try to search to join another network. So it tend to be power hungry. Yeah. I think anybody who's dealt with a home setup 
on any electronics has come to the conclusion that none of it actually works together. How do you overcome that? Basically by tying a lot of the stuff into the same network, you're solving some of that problem, right? Yes. So today, uh, there are solutions out there. One device send out signal. Everybody else that can listen, uh, can hear this device, will pick up the signal and uh, forward the message to the others. So by doing so, you can uh, sort of pass the signal along. But the problem is that because all these devices have to listen constantly, which is power hungry, and also when those devices pick up signal, they will broadcast it simultaneously, which generate a collision. So you will not have reliable communication in the channel. So you, in other words, you don't have a guaranteed message delivery system. So a lot of the solutions have, that have been developed in the past, though, have typically been the same problem as you've had with a car, right? Which mm -hmm. is you never really expected it to be connected to anything. Yeah. Now everything that's out there, including your light bulbs, are, will be connected. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, now you have a much more complex system that you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. well, so there's got to be an efficient way to connect all this device such that it is power efficient and it is scalable and also it's future-proof. One thing that does re is required on this is a security piece. How do we build that in without sucking down too much energy? Yes, security is also part of it. There will be uh, there will be authentication scheme. There will be encryption scheme all involved in this. Yeah, and the uh, and the authentication and the security only applies to those devices that has been connected. We now have a communications vehicle for this, at least. So we have the Bluetooth low energy uh, standard. We have a, a mesh network. Mm -hmm. But will everything actually work together? Um, one of the problems that I think a lot of people are frustrated with in the home is that you're going to your TV, you've got a, a, a stereo connected to it, and suddenly you have four or five, six remote controls, and none of them do everything. Mm -hmm. Are we getting to the point where we're going to have some standards here, and will this help? Well. Uh at this moment, I would say uh, things are still ongoing. There will be a couple of standards that coexist. And that's because, for example, you have smart TV and you have uh, gateway and you have set-up box and all those at home based on different standards. Those legacy won't go away in a day. But we see the trend of converge of all of these things, try to unify into one common platform or uh, not necessarily one common underneath technology, but one common platform such that the device can talk to each other, interact to each other. One other term that's, that's come up here is flooding. What exactly is that and how does that apply here? Oh, flooding means one device, one, one device, let's say this one try to pass a message to L1. There's no direct connection. Instead, it just broadcasts signal out. Whoever device, whichever device that can hear this one, will pick up the signal and the forwarding to the next one, and on and on. So this is almost like a flooding uh, process. Yep. It's sort of a se sequential broadcasting of that signal, right? Yes, yes. So how do you improve that? What's the problem there, and, and where do we go next? Yes, so the problem with flooding is, the first, to make sure all these devices can pick up this signal, all, this, all the devices in the network has to be power on constantly, and constantly listen. So this is a, which means all the devices actively listening, which join a lot of current or a lot of power out of the battery. And also the problem is when this device listen to this device simultaneously, they pick up the signal simultaneously. Then after that, they will turn around and broadcast the signal simultaneously. There will be a collision of the packet inside uh, in, the, in, in the air so that you won't have reliable, successful um, packet broadcast. So that, again, would be a waste of the power because if you don't have the reliable packet, you have to constantly send the message until you get the feedback, say, the message has been delivered. So there are a lot of redundancy and overhead. So basically what you've done is create a giant net and granularized what goes onto that network. So mm -hmm. you can actually pick out the individual devices and when they're communicating. Yeah. How quickly is that rolling out? Are we just at the very beginning of that? Yeah, we're in the we're in the beginning of that, and the Bluetooth mesh uh, activity is just at the starting point. We see the market pickup. We see customer looking forward to it, and uh, at standardization in Bluetooth SIG, we're also actively working on this. 
Will this be applied into any other markets as well? Do you see this potentially as cars connected to cars over a, a Bluetooth network? Well, there are there are technologies dedicated for the car. Uh, inside the car, there might in the future there might be a mini network, and so there is a possibility that uh, the mesh network can be used. How about other applications? Yeah, the, uh, app uh, other application like the retail. So a typical uh, a, a tip, uh, other application for this would be a retail. So for example, you have a lot of price tags in the re uh, in the store where you want to change the price on a particular tag, and uh, of course, the tag would be out of range, and in that case, you can rely on the mesh network to const uh, to uh, update the price on the tag or update the information on the tag instantaneously. Any applications in the industrial space as well? Yes, of course, the inventory control and the machine control, all this can possibly be done by mesh network through the BLE. So, how do you overcome this problem? There are different ways to, to overcome this problem. The way we think is maybe each device can take a turn. So which means each device take a particular time slot. Let's say for a given, this is a one second duration. If I chop this one second into several time slots, each device take a fixed time slot and talk, the other device listen to a particular time slot, and that will be much more power efficient. So why don't you explain what you've drawn there? Oh, so in a typical Bluetooth Low Energy chip, you will have an integrated software stack, a Bluetooth Low Energy stack, and there was a GET interface to the profile. So the Bluetooth uh, Low Energy based mesh is built on top of the GET interface. So it in it's a layered architecture. It includes the mesh layer, which responds to, which responds for uh, the node communication and the node synchronization. On top of that is a network layer. What network layer doing is for routing. So you find the best path from one node to the other. And on top of the network layer will be the application layer. Application layer which, which will determine whether this device is a light bulb or it's a door opener or it's a smartphone. So it's a layered architecture. And so from the device standpoint and from the chip standpoint, what you're doing is building this into one of the uh, blocks that is a Bluetooth uh, subsystem or IP block, and then everything else fits in on top of that, right? Yes. Yes. Anything you need to know about that in terms of uh, hooking this together and power, um, noise, anything else? Uh, no, not really. So this is a pretty uh, uh, agnostic to the Bluetooth solution. So as long as the Bluetooth solution comes with a gate, in, a gate interface, and it's always sit on top of that, being treated as a profile, so it's quite fairly easy to port in the system. Anything in terms of uh, throughput that you have to worry about as well, power optimization? Well, so the throughput of a mesh network is something, uh, is something that we assume in a typical mesh network the uh, data, the amount of data to communicate is fairly small. So it's a simple command like a turn on the light, turn off the light. So the amount of data requirement is not significant. So the throughput is not uh, significantly emphasized in Bluetooth low energy mesh network. Yifang Zhang, thank you very much for your time and great explanation. Okay, thank you.